So if you've ever wondered how to change your Rotax Max clutch shoes, today's your day. So welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. Today we're going to be showing you how to change your clutch shoes on the Rotax Max 125. We've covered this subject before, but I'd like to rehash it because another guy asked a question and I actually have only just shown you how to change your front sprocket and clutch drum. I haven't actually touched on the shoes. So today, we're going to show you how to remove the shoes, inspect them for damage, clean them, put them, it all back together so you're ready to go next time you hit the track. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the engine from the car. We've already done that and we've taken the chain guard off. You can do this on the go-kart, but it's a bit easier to get to it. If you've broken a shoe at the track, Obviously, you're going to have to remove your chain guard, the chain, maybe even your side pod so you can get your tools into the side of the engine. To get the bulk of the chain lube and grease and dirt off, you can use a heavy duty, cheap aerosol degreaser like this one. Otherwise, in here we've got uh, workshop solvent, which is a brake cleaner. Now that you've got most of the chain lube off with the degreaser, you can use some brake cleaner to get rid of any residual sort of oily deposits. That's mostly off the clutch shoes and inside the clutch drum, but you can use it a little bit on the outside as well. Okay, so now we've cleaned the engine, it's ready to start the procedures. You're going to need your little Rotax clutch locking tool. And this little guy just goes straight in there. So you can see that it's got the perfect profile to match the engine and it just locks into this ring gear perfectly so you can operate on the crankshaft. With your 17 millimeter ring spanner and the clutch locking tool in place on the ring gear, you can just undo this, shouldn't be too tight, and then just use your fingers to undo it. That's a 17 mil retaining nut. Then you've got the 11 tooth washer. These, there's two different washers, remember? This is the smaller 11 tooth washer and then there's a bigger washer for the 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16 sprockets. It's all the same size. So next up we're going to remove the clutch drum and inspect it for damage. So remove your clutch drum and you can sort of see inside here we've got a little bit of leftover dirt and grease. So we're just going to rub that out, make it all clean and new again. Okay, so this clutch drum here has cracked already. You can see there's a little crack there, a little crack here, and there will probably become another crack over here at some stage if we let it go for too much longer. So we're going to just um, change the sprocket off this clutch drum by removing the nut like we did in the other video. We'll put a link to that video in the description below. So to remove the nut here, we're going to place the clutch drum with the sprocket attached into the smallest cut out here on the plate, which is the 11 tooth. Now holding the clutch drum and the tool locking tool, you need a 38 millimeter impact socket and an impact gun. If the sprocket's locked into the old clutch drum and it's too tight, just get yourself a small hammer. Watch out for the dowel pin, you don't want to lose that. And just tap that out. You're left with the 11 tooth sprocket. This one here is still in serviceable condition, don't need to replace that. When the sprocket's worn out, these teeth will become sharp and then they start to lean as well. And then once that happens, the rate of uh, degradation starts to increase pretty significantly. You can lose horsepower, chew up chains, chew up sprockets. It's all bad. So make sure you keep an eye on this front sprocket and on your chain and rear sprocket because you want to keep those in as fresh a condition as you can. Okay, so now that you've removed the old damaged clutch drum from the sprocket, it's time to put it all back together. Don't forget when you're reassembling the clutch nut to install some Loctite as well. Then tighten the nut up with the rattle gun. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, 
please consider subscribing, turning on your notifications, giving us a thumbs up, or even still, better still would be to leave a comment in the comment section below. So next up, we're gonna remove the O-ring internal thrust washer and undo the, the screws that hold the clutch shoes to the ring gear. Okay, so to get the internal thrust washer off, you just sort of pull, the O-ring's holding it on, you see, and then the O-ring can come off, put that over there, thrust, thrust washer lasts. Now, we've got our little locking tool in place still until we knocked it out. And then five millimeter T-bar, crack those off there. And then undo them all. So now to get the clutch shoes off the ring gear, put a screwdriver in there. Oh, that came off really easy. And that will just pull the shoes straight off. Next up, we're going to clean the shoes and inspect them for damage. So you can see the clutch shoes are just a piece of steel and the guys at Rotax, very clever, they have laser cut this and then cut these little islands out uh, out of one piece of solid steel and then machine the, the holes to hold it. So then when the engine rotates, the centrifugal forces make the, the, the weight of this piece of steel fly out into the clutch drum and that's what locks on and gives you the drive. Just the the weight of this and the centrifugal force of the engine at 3000 RPM it engages on the clutch drum and gives you the drive forwards. Okay so where you want to inspect for damage is generally in this area here on the three cut out windows of the Rotax clutch shoes. If they're going to break anywhere they snap through here. The cracks normally start at the back and work their way forwards most of the times but sometimes by the time you look at it it's just cracked all the way through anyway. The way to tell when you've cracked a clutch shoe, it is uh, a telltale sign is as you pull into the ingrid after your session, the engine will stall straight away, it won't idle, and also too, when you go to start the next session, your starter motor is trying to drive the cart forwards because the clutch won't slip anymore because one of the shoes is jamming up inside the, in the clutch drum. While you've got it all apart, it's a good idea to clean the ring gear, re-lock tight the clutch shoe retaining nuts, and then put it all back together. So the locking tool falls out quite easily, so when you have it in there, just hold it with your one hand and then use your torque wrench to do them up to 15 Newton meters. Okay, so you can use your 5mm T-bar. Make sure you use it in this position so you get maximum leverage, but it is much better to use a torque wrench to guarantee you get the right tension on all three bolts. Firstly, internal thrust washer. Second, O-ring. Third, clutch drum assembly. Fourth, the retaining washer. Last, the nut, but first, tiny little bit of Loctite on there. Place the nut on. Place your locking tool in. Done. So there you have it, the Rotax Max.
clutch shoes, clutch drum, repair and replace procedure. Now, you can do this on the, at the track, on the cart, but best to do it at home. Preparation's key. Make sure you keep your eye on these things. Those clutch drums do break, the shoes do break, so keep your eye on them regularly. If you like the video, please consider subscribing, turning on the notifications, giving us a thumbs up, leaving comments in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic. Or check us out on our website, www.powerpublic.com.au. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.